Hi, I'm Chris Favre. I'm the web content manager for CFE Media and Technology, and I'm here at the A3 Business Forum in Orlando, learning all about the latest uh, automation, manufacturing, robotics trends. And I'm joined here today with Clint Bundy, of uh, the managing uh, director of Bundy Group, a CFE Media and Technology content partner. Clint is uh, a regular author on our website, so posting a, a monthly. Uh, uh, report on the uh, mergers and acquisitions happening within the automation and system integration industry. And he also wrote a report on uh, the year end trends of 2023 and what it looks like for the future in the automation and integration industry, which will be featured in, uh, on our uh, January February issue of Control Engineering. And he, would like, he came here today to share some of his insights with me on the report and what lo the future looks like. Thank you for joining me, Clint. Hey, Chris, thanks. It's great to join you again on another video. Yeah, likewise. So, you know, as we now look back on 2023, what were some of the uh, biggest challenges for integrators and manufacturers from a business standpoint that you saw? Yeah, and it, uh, let me start with my frame of reference is always going to be from an investment banker standpoint, sure. which means I'm on the front lines working with companies that are either raising capital or mm -hmm. looking for some kind of exit option. And you know, one thing that we're looking out for our seat when we're talking to companies, business owners, we're looking at their profit and loss statements, we're looking at their operational kind of key performance indexes is, uh, you know, or, or, or are we seeing any of this effectively, a decline? Mm -hmm. Are we seeing any volatility, mm -hmm. um, challenges with profitability? Um, and, you know, with, and we'll talk maybe more about this, but with the potential threat of a recession plus mm -hmm. a lot of other macroeconomic headwinds, yeah. we did see some added challenges. Uh, I think some of that could be considered even a continued hangover from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But I will have to say that even though there was a lot of talk about concerns tied to impact on company performance and volatility and, and profitability impacts, we actually didn't see it. Most, if not all, of our clients and relationships in this industry are doing mm -hmm. quite well. So a, lo a lot of smoke, but no fire. <laughs> well, yeah, and, you know, in, but there was a lot of business activity. You know, I think I counted more than 100 uh, mergers, acquisitions, transactions that you reported on over the course of 2023. And within those, you know, mergers, acquisitions, you know, however you want to describe it, were there any trends that kind of surprised you within a particular industry or subset that you hadn't expected? Yeah, and I, I'm glad you did point out our, our monthly publication we do, which thank you again for the opportunity. And I would encourage readers to take a look at uh, this list of transactions. And, you know, I think that, that there are a bunch of trends you can take away from it, one of which is just the consistency and volume that continued in both not just business sale, but capital raised transactions that mm -hmm. occurred across automation, whether you're talking about IIoT, you're talking about system integration, you're mm -hmm. talking about uh, software as a service type automation. And so there was just a lot of consistency and volume, which that is happening in a time where the M&A market as a whole was down in 2023. Mm -hmm. So you could call the automation market a safe haven for buyer and capital activity, which I think any owner or executive team uh, uh, in this industry should take a lot of solace and pride in that. Yeah, and you say it was a down year, but we had some months where it's like 15 to 20 transactions or capital raises or whatever, and it's like, wow, that's a down year. It's like, I'm, be interesting to see what happens when it's up here. Well, that's right. And, and the, the takeaway is it may have been a down year in the M&A market. It was not a down year in the automation right. M&A market. So, you know, we were talking about, you know, there was supposed to be a recession last year. It sounded like there was going to be a recession by all accounts in the general sense that didn't happen. But are there still those short and long term concerns within the automation and system integration industry about this happening? Yeah, good question. I mean, first of all, my crystal ball is no better than anybody else's, so <laughs> I, I don't know for sure what will happen this year. Cli I often joke with clients that they in part hire us to be paranoid uh, <laughs> for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, business owners and executives by nature are, are a pretty paranoid lot. It's what they're paid to do by mm -hmm. their, their shareholders and what have you. And um, what I would say is that uh, the, the, what we're seeing today is that um, that we're not seeing any signs of a recession. I don't know that a recession is actually going to materialize. But what I do know is that from what we're seeing from our potential clients and current clients is that their backlogs look strong. 
some of them are even going to have a higher backlog of performance mm -hmm. than they did in 2024, and that that their clients uh, continue to reiterate to them, you're a value-added solution to me that, frankly, I'm going to have to spend money, whether it be an integrator or a software automation company, mm -hmm. uh, a panel builder, they need their solutions. So right now, where it sits today, we're bullish on the performance for most players in this yeah. industry for 24. Yeah. You said you were talking about paranoia, you know, kind of being that, you know, that guy. But, you know, in general, there does seem to be this strange sort of split personality with the economy. On the macro level, it sounds like things are going pretty good, you know. A lot, there's been a lot of money around being spent, you know, all of that. On the micro level, there is this anxiety on the individual level, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, you know, it, how are companies kind of working to reconcile that sort of, you know, split personality or that so split concerns, if you will, on the business level, but on the individual level? Well, I think it goes back to, again, there's a lot of smoke, but no fire. I mean, and, and back to the earlier comment, they are... Everybody, every executive, myself included, by the way, is a little bit paranoid by nature. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like we, when we have an average conversation with an owner, most of the time it's them asking us a lot of questions about what we're seeing in the market in terms of macroeconomic, mm -hmm. them saying, I'm concerned about the future. And then when we ask, well, how's your performance look? How's your backlog look? Most, if not all, are saying, it looks great. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's, they're saying it's the best it's ever been. Yeah. So they're concerned about the macro, but to your point, uh, they're not actually seeing the impact in their, uh, in their specific companies and their mm -hmm. specific backlogs and performance. Right. So, and, you know, the automation has made some enormous strides in the last year. And what we would started to hear at, the, at the, this time last year, AI, particularly the rise of ChatGPT. And is that having an impact, the rise of AI in mergers and acquisitions, or is it too early to tell? A little too early to tell. What I would say is that where you're seeing it show up in the more immediate term in a lot of businesses, not just automation, but I know it's being used in automation, is that mm -hmm. it's helping uh, executives find ways to get operational improvements. So they're able mm -hmm. to use a chat GPT equivalent to frankly streamline commodity tasks. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of those are administrative uh, yeah. type tasks. And then so where they're streamlining, that then ultimately trickles down sometimes sooner rather than later mm. to the bottom line. And that, so, but you know, I can't really say that with an automation deal, are we seeing buyers, whether it be strategic or financial sponsors, yeah. come to us and say, talk to me about their AI strategy today. Yeah. That's probably pretty far down their totem pole list relative yeah. to what are their capabilities, what are their proprietary platform offerings, what's their industries they're operating in, et cetera. So it, it's like, you know, the low hanging fruit is being addressed right now. And, you know, as we've heard, you know, in some of the presentations already, it's like, this is laying the groundwork for what will be, you know, five to 10 years from now. And we'll see, you know, it's true manifestation uh, on that level, and who knows what that impact it will have then. I would agree. In fact, I hope you ask me this question again next year when we hopefully <laughs> do this, because I may have a very different answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we, we heard, you know, what the economy may look like in five to ten years uh, today, and, you know, with all the uh, projections and, uh, you know, worries and concerns, but you know, from what you've seen, you know, what is the biggest worry companies have in the short and the long term based on the feedback you've heard? You know, short and long term, short term, is there going to be a recession? Mm -hmm. And if so, how's it going to impact their financials? Um, short term also, as we hear at this conference, is even this morning, is about talent, finding talent. Mm -hmm. That's a major, major issue in this industry, as it is in many other industries. Long term, I feel like and Bundy Group included, most if not all executives and owners we talk to are incredibly bullish and optimistic about this industry, mm -hmm. the growth of it. Um, it's sort of a, what I like to call, if, if you're an owner or your management team, you, if, you, if you do things the right way, uh, you execute the right way, then this market and the lift that you're going to get, you should grow, you should perform. Mm -hmm. So it really just boils down to execution risk. Do yeah. we as a company do things the right way? Yeah. If we don't, that's the only way we're going to fall. Right. So, you know, a lot of uh, potentially bright times ahead, but, you know, that crystal ball, who knows? But, uh, who knows? yeah. <laughs> Well, well, thank you very much, Clint, for joining me today. And uh, if you enjoyed uh, this video, we have other trade show uh, 
interviews and reports that you can find on our YouTube channel, Control Edge TV, as well as a recap of the event on our website, ControlEng.com. And we also will have a, uh, a, a wrap-up of the uh, event later on in the next couple of weeks. And you can also find it on our website, and there will be a link to that as well. And I'm Chris Vavra, Web Content Manager for CFE Media and Technology. Thank you for joining me here from A3 Business Forum in Orlando.